and gentlemen, and welcome inside the Blazers Ice Center for game one, or game two, rather, of this two-game series between the Mudbugs and the Oklahoma Warriors. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chet Yoder with the Landers Dodge Jeep Chrysler and Ram pregame show. And tonight, the Mudbugs will try to bounce back after a 3-0 defeat by the hands of these very same Warriors where it just seemed like they couldn't get anything really going uh, outside of a good Nicky Miller fight against Cole Telecki and some good hard physical play, but they only mustered 15 shots on net and they lost three nothing. There was kind of a controversial call at 10-10 of the second that resulted in a penalty shot. The Mudbugs bench very upset at the officiating staff for calling uh, Logan Haru for a hooking infraction on Malta Hasselgren, which resulted in a penalty shot and Hasselgren was able to poke one past Tommy Aiken for his fourth of the year and then the Mudbugs were down one nothing at that point, and it kind of deflated them. They kept battling, and then at 17.30 on the power play, it was Ryland Brady who redirected home his fourth of the year from Telecki and Brendan Williams, and then at 18.54, Garrett Harsager tapped in the empty netter to ice the game. Once again, the Mudbugs fall uh, in last night's contest by a final score of three to nothing. They'll look for a better showing tonight and they've made some changes in their lineup, and we'll get to that in the Whataburger starting lineups uh, in just a little bit. Mudbugs overall on the season, they're six, seven, and two. No reason to panic, it's still early, but the only concerning thing for the Mudbugs right now is they have a lot of games in hand on everybody. They've, they've played 15 games, that's the most games played out of any team in the South Division. So they find themselves in fifth place, one point out of fourth place, two points out of third place and three points out of the second place spot. But the problem is they have played more games. So they're going to have to win these games and get on a string of wins because there's a lot of every other team in the South has games in hand on the Mudbugs. If it's one game in hand or five games in hand, and that's just the kind of the kooky uh, way of the schedule being played out. For well, the Mudbugs, it's early. They don't panic. They got off to a horrendous start last season where they lost 14 of their first 18 games. And, of course, that's not going to happen this year to begin the season. But they also want to get on a consistent ways. And most importantly, they got to put pucks in the back of the net. And that's been one of their concerns early in this season, one of the lowest scoring teams in the league. They've implemented some new guys in the lineup tonight, and they will look for them to provide a spark. This Warriors team, they're 8-2, and two, and boy, they've been playing some great hockey uh, overall. One of those two losses, of, of course, against the Mudbugs back at George's Pond. They're going to go pretty much with the same lineup for the exception of a couple of skaters and a change in net. They've been going back and forth between Cameron Corpy and Daniel Durris. The Mudbugs know, like I said, it's early. They've made a few tweaks to the lineup, and they hope that tonight is a recipe for a win. Mudbugs Hockey Tonight brought to you by Porter's Industrial. Delivering the difference in the Arklatex for over 20 years, Porter's Industrial strives with the utmost integrity to meet our customers' needs with quality uniform and facility services. We'll talk to Mudbugs associate head coach Michael Hill after these messages. This is the Landers Dodge Jeep Chrysler and Ram pregame show. It's game two of this two-game series between the Mudbugs and the Warriors. We'll have more after these messages. This is Shreveport Mudbugs Hockey. Why don't we make it count? Hi, I'm Janice Watt with Generational Financial Advisors, and we're here to assist you as a financial advisor and a CPA in making those important life decisions. Starting young, saving, and investing will reward you down the road, but it takes diligence to stay the course because life happens. Buying that first home, adding to your family, and then preparing for college, all of these require a plan. We offer services including investments, life insurance, retirement planning, and long-term disability, just to name a few. We can also assist you in your tax preparation or planning along with small business services. We are an independent brokerage company with access to hundreds of products. Call me at 318-219-4188 or log into gfapartners.com to set up a free consultation. Our offices are located at 8518 Line Avenue, Suite 103 in Shreveport. 
Come see us and go Bugs! The Robertson Cup champion Shreveport Mudbucks know big goals lead to big wins. That's why State Farm agent Ben Tolis and his State Farm team are here to help you score a big goal with your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go score the winning goal and score savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help your life go right. Call State Farm agent Ben Tolis today at 318-688-1522. That's 318-688-1522. Welcome back in the Landers Dodge Jeep Chrysler and Ram pregame show finale of this two-game series between the Oklahoma Warriors and the Shreveport Mudbugs. We're joined by Mudbugs associate head coach Michael Hill. And, and coach, uh, last night, obviously a lot, of, a lot of tensions flaring, maybe a lot of calls that maybe went both ways that maybe you didn't want to go, and maybe the other team felt, felt the same way. But, of course, uh, I think the one problem has been scoring goals. And you guys got shut out last night, and I think that has been a little bit of an issue going on at least in the start of this season has that been a concern that you guys have been able to address um yeah i think part of that concern goes with the shot volume and we don't have a high shot volume so um just need to start putting pucks to the net funnel them through and uh, i think that will solve a lot of problems and create more stress on the other team so i see other teams they're just kind of shooting pucks on the perimeter and it's creating other opportunities obviously as a coach, we've been in situations on good and bad, and as of late, it's been a little bit of uh, not producing, and, you know, you could shoot from anywhere, and you probably have an opportunity for the puck to go in. So I think we just need higher shot volume and uh, getting into the areas to have those good quality shots to produce the, the goals that we need. I know uh – one problem last night was the power play. You guys had a plethora of opportunities, unable to cash in. Did you see anything that was, I guess you can say, fixable? Oh, yeah. I mean, they were all trying to do it by themselves, a lot of one-on-one -on -one play. Um, if you're able to use that one-man advantage um, to your advantage, then um, you'll have a lot more success. And by doing it one-on-one, -on -one, um, you're, just, you're just not going to do a whole lot. You see all the NHL teams and college teams that have successful power plays. They're using each other a lot more. And uh, our guys last night just wanted to uh, kind of go up on a guy one on and their teammates. So I think that's uh, another thing that's going to be changing tonight. And the personnel on that as well will be changing, going more with a um, just go in and put in the work type of power play and get rewarded. So really excited to see what opportunity uh, presents itself. Our job, and uh, I know maybe both coaches or no coach in the world could ever be be satisfied with with an officiating crew, just with how the game unravels. But I wanted to ask you about the penalty shot call. I know Logan Haru was at Vin. His tail off to get with the guy, and he did. Stick lift on him and uh, did a great job at eliminating uh, a shot on net. Uh, not too often are you going to have a penalty shot called when it's on a stick lift. Um, that's just a normal defensive play to take the puck from another player. I would understand if he came over top, that would definitely be upwards of a slash or a hook or gets him in the hands. But when you're skating side by side with a guy and kind of just out muscle him and get under his stick, I think that was a good defensive play by Haru. And, um, you know, I, I told him, like, there's no better way to defend it than work your bag off and go ahead and get under his stick, and that's exactly what he did. And I, I obviously don't agree with the call. Um, so, and that was a real game changer because it was a uh, little bit of a heated death match at that point, where it was back and forth on on both ends. And um, you know, there's multiple times we were getting our stick lifted and getting the puck knocked off us, and didn't go in our favor in times that we were doing it more so than them throughout the game as well and still wasn't calling it I think I think in the play as well and um, you know it's I get it, it's a developmental league for the refs to make the right call but also to make the call right away rather than make the play dead think about it give yourself some thought and then make the call that's where these refs need to I think grow and mature in their game and 
um, I do see it in a lot of the younger refs and the way that they want to get on to the next league and level in refing. But, uh, I mean, for the refs that are sticking around here in this league for multiple years at a time, you could tell why they're still here in this league. They they just own up. And, um, you know, I had a coach just tell me when it's just be better. And, you know, just as jokingly as that is, I think they need to not really – um, put themselves first, or they, in, in other words, they just need to humble themselves in situations. So, yeah, it was, it was, I'm, I'm sure they're, 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 uh, the coaches over there were frustrated with some of the calls because we were a physical team as well. Um, and, you know, we basically instruct our guys on what you are stick on puck, your shoulders down, you're going to kind of get them shoulder to shoulder, or, you know, break through the hand. So that's, that's just what we, coach and teach our guys to do on the physicality part um so like i i could get get it and understand why other coaches would be frustrated too with uh if they were on the other bench um last night um before i let you go obviously you guys are trying to build some consistency here and going into last night's game you had won three or past four and um Obviously, a big opportunity tonight to kind of get back in the win column, and this is a long road trip for you guys. You guys are away from George's Pond in about a month or for about a month, and so obviously a big opportunity tonight to, to grab a serious split. What needs to happen from your A beautiful rendition of tonight's national anthem sung here at a very good looking barn which is filled up to capacity once again for a second straight night. And that is a lot of credit due to this Warriors organization. Very special guest. You might remember him from the NFL, former OU Sooner great. That's Sam Bradford and he, boy, he still looks good. Former Minnesota Viking, former Ram. And what a huge, huge Sam Bradford in the house. And of course set a lot of records and had a lot of success for Oklahoma football. And he's got a few words to say to my right. First period coming up, and it's brought to you by Generational Financial Advisors. For more information on planning your life's needs from college to retirement, you can call Ms. Janice Wan at 318-219-4188 or log on to gfapartners.com for any college football or NFL football fan. That's a special treat to have Sam Bradford in the house. I'm an avid football fan, and I thought that was quite touching and very neat to see. It'll be Brent Litchard to take the Landers opening puck drop against number 19, Drew Sutton. Delayed offside on Warriors hockey, and we get a whistle. This faceoff will come out of the Mudbug zone. It'll be Jaden Goldie to battle for the Faceoff win, but he loses it. Jones to the far side. And her, oh, good steal there by Morris. Up ahead there to Miller. Miller now will just leak it into the near corner. There for Morris. Morris play to the left point. There to Haru. Haru hammers one toward the net. It gets blocked in front. That's a good block there by Lawson Body. Now played back out to center. Lawson Body lays a hit on Zarski. Now through the middle. Up ahead there to Miller. Miller gains the blue line for Shreveport. He comes around the far corner. Snaps one on net. A right pad save made there by Corpy. That's a big save made there early. Far side, hard check there as Caden Nelson gets hip checked there by Zarski. Net gets hit hard along the back there by Horsager. Now behind the cage 
played, banked back up top. Fleet flips one toward the net, tipped on its way. Oh, wow, a quick whistle as there was a loose puck between the pads of Corpy. And the Mudbugs bench making their feelings known. That was a generous whistle, as the Mudbugs think it was. It's a good crew tonight, Alex Berard. The lead referee, along with Anthony Orsini and Odin Nelson, they did a good job last night to try to maintain order in which was a kind of a chaotic game. Very few teams. Played off the near side now, far side. And now coming up along the left side, that's Arlick. And he gets run into there by Gotinski. Played back out, delayed offside. And I think Hasselgren was late to get the memo, but he's able to back out and clear out. Off the far side, boards all the way down. Should be icing on Shreveport, and it will be. Mudbugs will be back in action next Friday night in Albuquerque, New Mexico to take on the Ice Wolves. It'll be a 7.30 Central puck drop, 7.15 with the Landers, Dodge, Jeep, Chrysler, and Ram pregame show. It's a Central time zone. Uh, actually, it's a mountain time in New Mexico, so it's 6.30 in New Mexico, but you don't got to worry about that. Use Central time, folks. 7.15 with the Landers pregame show. Next Friday night, the first of two in New Bushler. Face off, battle at, was won there by the Mudbugs. Litchard's going to try to grab it. Now, uh-oh, thrown in front, save made there by Bushler. And now he gets mauled in the goal mouth. Pushing and shoving now, lost some bodies in there. Zarski was clearing out space. As Kaden Nelson attacked the net pretty hard. Boy, a lot of barking going on behind Bushley the game. It was a great atmosphere last night. I expect the same this evening. Face off one there by the Warriors. Shot on net, blocked in front. Zarski's got it far side there to Burke, and Burke from the right side will just rattle it in behind the Warriors' cage. Zarski's in deep. Now to the far corner. Burke drops it off there for Musket. Musket, oh, that was... Just kicked out of trouble there by Lawson Body. Now far side there to Lawson Body. Got a little space. Throws one toward the net. Smothered up there by Bushler. Oh, a hard hit after the whistle. And Horsager now using his stick. And now it's starting to get a little frisky. Coming around the corner there is Lawson Body. And now Lavassier clearing out space. Litchard was there, rather. That was not Lavassier. And Bushler's got a ringside seat for all the extracurricular activities. Lawson body. Young, brash, not the boy next door. And we'll try to figure out what we have coming out of this one. I think only one penalty's coming up, and I think it's going against the Mudbucks. It's just going to be Zarski. Mudbugs want to know if this one's going to get evened up. It looks like Lawson Body's going in as well. Well, the Mudbugs will take that trade off. Get the captain out of the game for two minutes. Boy, the Warriors were going to have a power play out of this, and now looks like we're going to get four on four hockey. We won't get into the special teams numbers. Those are skewed right now as they got to fix last night's stat line. It'll be four on four hockey for the next two minutes. Six twenty gone by here in the opening period. Faceoff will come, I believe, outside the Mudbugs blue line. Boy, no love lost last night. 
and it's been rekindled tonight. They are still in the honeymoon phase of this season series between these two teams, and you have to think that the Warriors still have a few guys on that team that was swept in three games a couple of seasons ago. Here comes Hasselgren, and he mishandled it around the right post. Hard check along the back. Down goes Baumgartner. Now Baumgartner tied up there with Fleet. And now near side, here comes Suchinski thrown in front. Oh, boy, hooked up a little bit there was Miller. Now playing through the middle, intercepted there to Fleet, up ahead there to Miller. Miller's got a little space. Now he'll pivot back. Now just dished in deep along to the far side, down low, hard check along the back there was Fleet. And now taken ahead there by Hasselgren. He's got it along the left side. He comes through the slot. He's got too many Mudbug jerseys. Good stick there by Volkema to poke it out of trouble. Now up ahead. Faceoff will come back. Corpy, and we got a break in the action. 10-21 to go here in the opening frame. No score from Oklahoma City. This is Shreveport Mudbucks Hockey. You know, we only get one chance at this thing called life, so why don't we make it count? Hi, I'm Janice Watt with Generational Financial Advisors, and we're here to assist you as a financial advisor and a CPA in making those important life decisions. Starting young, saving, and investing will reward you down the road, but it takes diligence to stay the course because life happens. Buying that first home, adding to your family, and then preparing for college, all of these require a plan. We offer services including investments, life insurance, retirement planning, and long-term disability, just to name a few. We so that, sure they'll agree with me as well. <laughs> I hope all is well in the Mack family. Sutton Murray wins the draw. Now up ahead. Here comes Burke. He's tried to split the D, and he just couldn't get around the pesky stick of Baumgartner. Far side shot there by Brady. Goes wide of Bushler. Now down low. Now that's Brady. Now just shafted away there by Bushler, and he gets the protective netting. Bushler didn't like where that biscuit was going, so he decided to paddle it in to the protective netting behind him. Another packed house tonight from the Blazers Ice Center. Mudbugs will have two against New Mexico next weekend, then take on the Lone Star Baramas, who never seem to lose a game these days. They have won 11 straight under Dan Wildfong. They're 13-1 on the year having an unbelievable start to this season. Their first place and first place in the South by a mile. It's very reminiscent to their start in the 2016-2017 season when they got off to a blistering start. Far circle shot blocked in front. Dangerous puck now taken there by Murray. Murray will just mail it in and take a hard hit. Top the face. Now behind the net, Gotinski worked off the near side boards. It's now jab back out to center. Austin angles it up. Face off will come to the right of Bushler. First power play of the night for Wichita, or I want to say Wichita Falls, Oklahoma City. Like I said, the numbers are skewed in the overall special teams numbers. They had to fix that last night. Those have not been fixed. So, where's well, a good unit or a top five unit going into this series? Now to the left point, thrown across there to Hasselgren. Hasselgren now back up top to Baumgartner. Baumgartner waits. Now to the near half wall to Hasselgren. Hasselgren now works the point. Now to the left point there to Baumgartner. He's waiting. Shot toward the net, gets blocked. Now blocked in front. There's traffic. Fumbling around. Oh, boy, Bushler's got it, and he looked behind him as he lost sight of it. That is a scary moment for Bushler, but he kept it out of trouble. With 1.33 remaining on this man advantage for the Warriors. Goldie will take the draw from the right wing circle. Face off, one there by the Warriors. Boy, they have been good in face off draws. High slot, Baumgartner a shot off the stick of Goldie. 
And it goes right in to the protective netting. Look my right, your left. Left wing circle draw. Litchard will take it. Mudbug struggled in the faceoff circle last night. Got to get better in that. They want to beat this talented Warriors squad. Faceoff tied up. Ah, one there by Oklahoma. The Hassel grin now. He'll set it up up top to Baumgartner. Now across there to Del Greco. He mishandled it, but he's able to hold the zone. Now Del Greco will go to Baumgartner. Now left wing shot down low. Now that was Lawson body, and he got poke checked away there by Baumgartner. A little space here. Here comes Baumgartner across, trying to find the back door. Mudbugs trying to clear it. Can they? Litchard cannot grab hold of it. Back to Del Greco. Del Greco's got it. 55 seconds to go on this man advantage. Del Greco played back now to Lawson body. Baumgartner a drive blocked in front there by Goldie. And Goldie able to rip it all the way down. Under 40 now left on the penalty. Far side, Brady. Now to the right side there to Carlisle. He kicked it around a little bit. Gotinski now along to the near corner. Trying to get some help now. Ryland Brady looks confused. As I link the puck got stuck along those boards. Both teams have a... I'm Chet Yoder coming to you live from the Blazers Ice Center. So glad to have you with us for a wide of Bushler and a shot there. Glove save made there by Bushler and a shot there by Caden Nelson from the right half wall. He gloved it down and then dropped it to keep play going. Danziger off the stick of steel. He didn't expect that pass to come with that much steam. Now uh, by the Bugs. Sushinsky try to work it down low. Now Fleet's there. Sushinsky gets taken down. Now taken there by Goldie. Right up the middle there to Morris. Morris now along the left side. He's got a little, he's got some help now. Morris through the seam. Dropped off off the stick now of Fleet. Fleet's in the period. Ah, oh, that pass gets deflected in the protective netting. Faceoff will stay in deep into the Warriors zone. Another great pace to this one. Scoreless with 2.10 to go here in the opening frame. Be sure to stick around for our Brookshire's Food and Pharmacy First in a Mission show. We'll talk to Case and Musket. Had a memorable weekend last weekend for the Bugs. Mud Bugs are going to need some more magic out of that guy and that line. Face off one there by the Bugs. Oh, the loose puck. They score. That was Nicky Miller. Unable to glove it down, there was Corpy, and Nicky Miller slams it home. Mudbugs won, Warriors nothing. Miller stayed true to the puck, and he gets rewarded with his first goal since opening night. Our chess goal number four on the year for Nicky Miller, and that's a big one late in the first. Boy, just a little bit of a lofter toward the net. It handcuffed Corpy. And Nick Miller was right there to pounce on it and sweep it home. Great work from Miller as he's able to spin in his fourth of the season. And now we got a whistle. We got a penalty coming up. This one looks like it's going against the Warriors. And what a big moment in this game. The Mudbugs have a 1-0 lead, and they're going to get the Scott Powerline power play to work. Boy, Nick Miller, who had been snake-bitten with goals, cashes in in a big way. Back to Haru. And now play to the right point. Drake Morris will get the helper, along with Goldie on Miller's fourth of the season. A 
Bugs with the early 1-0 lead. Now play to the near corner. Slashing is the call. Mudbugs trying to stay with it. Top of the point. Her shot made. There was, there was a little bit of a rebound in front as Burke was there, but it stays out. 